I'm Ilse Defoy. I live in Broome. I'm a Walmanyaru woman from this clan group in the township of Broome. Yes, I think um, it's a story that has to be told because of the effect it has on children and grandchildren years later. I didn't know much about the program at that time. Uh, all I knew that on the weekends, mum and dad would say, oh, well, we'll go to Derby and visit John and Madeline and uh, Nita and John Marshall, because our, our dad's grandson, Johnny Rowe Jr., married Madeline, who was Nita and John Marshall's daughter. And they lived across from the powerhouse. And there's drums and drums of stuff there, we don't know what, but when he had to go to work, he had to go across to the powerhouse around that area. And he was so proud, because newly married, very young, all got jobs. You know, they were all strong, fit young men. You know, he was solid, very handsome. And uh, to see him deteriorate like he did over the years was heartbreaking. But there was all these other boys too. It was sad for them. They went through a lot. But that's, you know, Dad, you say, it's like Asian orange. And we didn't even know what he was talking about in those days. But as we got older, we realised that Dad was very wise in lots of ways. He predicted a lot of things or he watched what was happening, but he, you know, he was just an ordinary Aboriginal Islander man, so lot had lots of friends and they talked. Oh God, it must have affected a lot of the young people, you know, from the parents to having children. It's like any poison that you get into your bloodstream. It goes through your body into, you know, the next generation, which is sad, really. I've heard, uh, I've heard people, women talk about it. I've heard them say how You know, they had, they didn't like washing the clothes because not only did it stink, but it, um, it was a funny colour. It changed the colour of the water or something. And I thought, oh, are you sure it's not your imagination? And they said, no, no, that's how it was. Well, they've tried, they've taken it to court, they've tried, um, to get the government to be answerable for these few people that, few hundred men maybe, and families that have been affected, but nobody wants to take that responsibility. And you know, we're a nation of Australians. We should be looking after one another, and it's such a shame that the Australian government won't take that responsibility. and. Even if majority of them were Aboriginal, there was a lot of Europeans affected as well. So, you know, it's not just getting rid of the black fellas, it was affecting these poor white people. So it worked out, you know, you could make it a race thing, but it's not a race thing because there was white men affected young men that went to school with these boys, they all grew up together. 
And there's a few that did go out. Mm. There was that guy that died a few years ago. His wife is waiting now on some sort of compensation or something for, from the government. He was on TV. He, he was going to hold out, but he couldn't. Now, he was European. But you know, it's the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we still was in the workforce. And then when the Europeans came to the Kimberleys, well, then they didn't have to pick them to be in the workforce. They picked their mates. So, which means that these, if, it, if this happened now, it would be majority white people that will be affected. So what would the government do about that, I would like to know. You know what compensation would they get in their kids? And, um, but because of the people that were living here at the time, happy with their jobs, getting jobs, as soon as they left and got married and went to school, They didn't care, you know, there was no safeguard for any of them. It meant a class action, but I think the government should get the health department um, engaged in following up these cases that children affected and people affected. And they should get compensation because, um, you know, their life is ruined and their kids' lives. And as you say, they keep blaming themselves for their kids' illnesses and disformity. So I don't know how else we could get the government to be answerable for producing, you know, putting this in the Kimberleys for the Aboriginal people to work with. Well, I think the UN has got a lot of pull in what happens in Australia because everybody seemed to go to them for advice and what's, you know, happening here. I don't think our government has got enough staying powers to make decisions and do things on their own without consulting the American people. And uh, the First Nation people never got consulted on spraying poisons in our Kimberley. You know, and if they were doing that, and they were doing that. How many other people got affected and animals got affected? And the people that ate the animals, how did they get affected? Because we all eat guana, we all eat the, you know, the wild fruits and all that. So, you know, if we weren't um, indigenous to the country, maybe we wouldn't eat as much of these indigenous food, but we do. So if that affects us, if they're spraying and a guana eats something that, say, a snake or a lizard that died from that orange, then we kill it and eat it. What effect is it on us? See, there's no studies been on all this. And it's just not, um, I don't think it's, I don't think people are thinking about other people when they do things. They just think about the getting rid of it and the outcome. You know, not, not how it's going to affect other lives. Well, it's gone through the Kimberleys. 
you know, and there's people in Darwin that are affected with it, you know, through marrying into the Kimberleys and going across there. So, didn't just stay with us, but ours is still with us. It's living today with us. And still nobody's doing anything about it. Not, the government is not following this up. And that would be a public health thing, you know? Like you've got um, STD and all these things. They get followed up. But something like this, that killing people slowly doesn't get followed up, you know? Uh, they've been trying to get rid of the blackfellas from since the 50s, 60s, since the stolen generation, to have them all amalgamating into Europeans so they'll all be white. But uh, that hasn't happened. Yeah, they grew up and married their own. <laughs> and so, except for a few, they married outside, like myself. To me, it's a form of genocide that has affected a few hundred thousands of people and their children. But it hasn't wiped out the black floor race. So unless they wipe us all out, then I can call it genocide. But it is a form of genocide. It's very difficult. I mean, even in your own people <laughs> in power, uh, I mean, genocide is happening all the time with the Aboriginal people through the alcohol, the homelessness, the taking away of their camps, you know. All this is just a wheel, just keep turning. To me, that's a form of genocide, you know. And the illness of our children is not being picked up is just being ignored. You know, the health department has got to start making the government stand up for their responsibility.